the theme that we see through our readings and through this uh, gospel is that our ways are not God's ways. We see that first in our first reading where Samuel goes uh, to look for the next king, and he goes to Jesse, because the Lord told him it would be one of Jesse's sons, and he tells Jesse, I need to see your sons, one of them is going to be king, and Jesse brings out all of his sons except David, because David's the youngest, the smallest, the weakest. Why would David ever be a king? And it's David, obviously, who then gets chosen to be not only the king, but the greatest king in, in the kingdom of Israel. Uh, and then from his line, we have the Messiah. And so it was kind of odd to everybody around that this young, scrawny, weak boy would be anointed and eventually crowned as king. And we get to our gospel where this man born blind, no one can understand or believe how Jesus, this human, could have done such a marvelous act. And then to do it on the Sabbath, he must be a sinner, he must be all these reasons they came up with to say that it wouldn't happen. And at the end, uh, what I think is the funniest part of it is then this blind beggar ends up teaching and preaching to these Pharisees uh, who are clearly blind. And now he's trying to give them the light that he received from Jesus. And that's what we are called to do. We all have those moments where you know, we don't realize what God is doing or we may lack that faith and that trust in the Lord because we're unable to see sometimes, for me it's most of the time, we're unable to see how God is working within our life. And once we kind of give over to that trust and that faith, knowing that, uh, you know, to quote a terrible song, that Jesus has the wheel, <laughs> um, then we can allow ourselves to see that God is in charge. And that's where Jesus says, when if you were blind, you'd have no sin, but now you're, uh, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you're saying we see, and so you're sinners. So it's in the blindness of trusting completely in the Father's will and in everything that the Father wants to do and just letting God drive the car. It's in that blindness that we're able to fully trust and be united with the Blessed Trinity. Whereas if we just want to see everything and be in total control, that's when chaos ensues and our temptations and our weaknesses take over instead of Jesus, right? But then for those of us who are blind, we need Jesus to come and let us see that he needs to be the one in control. We see that in David's family with Jesse. They, they didn't understand, but then once they just allowed Samuel to anoint David and for David to go off and do his thing, eventually killing Goliath and uh, becoming the greatest king in Israel, once they allowed God to just kind of take over, then they saw that everything was good. Same here in our gospel. So on this Laudete Sunday, the Sunday full of joy, as we get closer now to Holy Week, whether it's virtual for the majority of us, will be virtually a Holy Week. This is now where we have to trust that the Father's plan is the plan to follow, right? So it's after today that if there was no coronavirus, holy water would be removed from churches. Next Sunday, you'll see the statues covered and holy images covered up because now we're starting to go blind so that we can fully allow God to take over. And no one expected the cross to be the way that God would beat sin and beat death. Yet that's what happened. And that's the greatest love story ever. And now we have to be able to have that faith to see that even though we may not like it, God is in control and whatever he does is going to be great it's going to be perfect, and it will be love. 